we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, next and final agenda item for this morning session. Um, we've got Jeff Grau and uh, Gonzalez on here. Jeff, are you able to share your slides? Okay, great. And we can see your slides. We are still seeing okay. um, out here. Are you able to hear me, Michael? We can. Loud and clear. All right, fantastic. My name is Jeff Graw, and I'm an engineering manager with Parker Hannafin. And I'll be presenting a recently published Manual couplings along with um, Michael Gonzalez, um, the sales engineer from Sane. Um, so we were lucky enough to, to lead um, a team of contributors out of Best Cold Plate Group, um, which consisted of folks from Sane, Facebook, and Safeway, or especially. And so it's a it's a best practices white paper, and you know what's the scope of the white paper, right? So it's it's for the it's for the plumbing. Um, it's the hose and the couplings that are going to be used to connect um, different segments of the liquid loop um, that's used for cooling um, the IT here. So you see, we have uh, a liquid cooled rack. Uh, we may need to connect to pumping unit or maybe um, in rack CDU or a, a row. This could be a chilled door heat exchanger. There's also plumbing obviously needed to connect to systems. And so um, again, we just kind of want to provide um, some, some fundamental background. Um, was, uh, Technicians that aren't that aren't familiar uh, with industrial systems, and they're not uh, familiar with um, hose and, and so lots of um, lots of terminology and lots of kind of kind of foundational information in this white paper. But basically, um, one of the main goals is is provide guidance on the performance characteristics that technician may be looking to specify um, for their particular loop that, that, that they're interested in. So in terms of uh, the white paper, we, we start with uh, lots of kind of definitions and, and, and terminology uh, for hose. Uh, what are the manufacturing processes uh, that are used to what are the um, different layers that the hose is comprised of? Um, what's the difference between hose and tubing? Um, similarly, what's the difference between rubber hose, hose materials? Um, kind of like historically, what are the strengths versus the, the strengths of the thermoplastic materials? And then on the coupling side, we also provide information about the different valve and, and poppet concepts, different connection styles that can be um, between the coupling and the different components in the cooling loop. All right, so I wanted to outline a series of uh, performance characteristics 
subject that you might be interested in when you're reviewing um, which hose or um, tubing you want to use in the different cooling loops. So the design parameters that we're discussing um, are shown here. And really we want background on, on each attribute. So where there's industries that uh, and test methods um, that can can be used to quantify a particular material's strength or weakness in one of these attributes, like that. Um, we also give um, hose manufacturers um, from adjacent industry experience. You know, for instance, um, you you. See you talked about there. Um, this could be when you're routing a, a thermoplastic or rubber material near sh sharp edges of sheet metal. What are some best practices for, for routing? So we show uh, um, sort of like uh, examples of what proper and improper routing looks like. Um, we talk about Hose assembly tensile strength, so how much how much force is uh, is required to separate the hose from the hose barb? We talk about practices for hose barb connections and, and clamping materials. Uh, we talk about the difference between maximum operating pressure uh, that the hose is rated for and, and what its ultimate burst strength is, and and safety factors. We also address shipping and, and storage considerations. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Michael and Michael can talk a little the manual couplings. Okay. Um, thanks Jeff for uh, handing it over. Um, so great job of course and I know we put in a lot of work on this. Uh, so along with the hoses we also looked at the couplings as Jeff mentioned, uh, as they involve, are involved in engineered solutions. Um, and we talked a lot about you know, some basics, uh, just like we did with the hoses. So we looked at manual coupling types, overall connection design functions. Um, we have some pictures listed there, quick visual of different kinds of quick connect couplings. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we talked about uh, making you know, a solution interchangeable. Uh, between QC suppliers. Uh, so, you know, there may be some agreed upon design parameters and tolerances. Uh, and that's probably the most challenging part of a solution that is going to require one more than one or a few QC suppliers. Uh, we talked about seal material, uh, which is very important when we're looking at couplings, which um, are involved with fluid media transfer. Uh, usually, this is influenced by UL with 157 guidance, um, but it's also important because the seal type and selection will have an effect on friction. Uh, why is friction important? Because that will have an effect on the amount of force the user needs to connect this. So whether it's at a rack manifold or we're talking about just a manual connection by hand, uh, there is a direct impact when we're talking about the friction of the seals and how they interact with the media and what that means for user or maintenance or whoever needs to physically connect and disconnect. Uh, we also looked at threaded connections. Uh, there are various types, uh, female versus male, even hose barbs, uh, different types, you know, BSP, SAE, and that's usually application-based. Um, and we just listed a lot of those and talked about when those might be used. Slide. We also looked into spillage. So ACS, of course, you know, we're concerned about spillage at the racks, at the manifolds and how we can minimize this, uh, but also quantify it. So sometimes, you know, we want to assume that there will be absolutely no leakage, but in actuality, there may be some design parameter which says you can have a very, very small amount of leakage and all QC suppliers agree that this is possible and is optimal for the design. And then of course we looked at pressure drop 
which is directly related to efficiency of the system as a whole. So we want to ensure that we're making the design engineers or the whole companies, you know, their engineering team, their system more efficient by minimizing pressure drop as much as possible. So this might be something that's looked at, you know, throughout the whole design process to see how it's affected with different design changes. Uh, oftentimes when we talk about pressure drop, we look at uh, CV or flow coefficient, which is uh, basically a good measurement that is used in the industry for couplings when talking about pressure drop. And that's usually listed next to a certain type of coupling that would be used, but this can change uh, with design changes. Uh, also looked at fluid compatibility. So I know we included a table here on this slide and that's usually something that's known. So we may have a list of wetted materials and we know what it will be coming in contact with in terms of the fluid media. And you do a check down uh, as you're going through to decide you know, how risky will this fluid be with these materials. And then of course there's a testing stage to ensure, but the tables give you a good idea of what, of what will happen in application. Uh, we also looked at burst strength or pressure rating uh, usually for liquid cooling, we're not seeing terribly high pressure systems, uh, but we still would design for some safety factor. And of course, there's a direct relation between uh, the added safety factor and the cost. So that could be something that comes into play when looking at the overall design. Next slide. ACS in this group and the white paper also looked at uh, supply and return conventions. Uh, and this is a little bit different because, you know, it's morally something that we do uh, on site or in the design to kind of follow that polka yoke format, which is to avoid mistakes being possible in the field. Uh, this can be uh, key or color coding the couplings or the coupling nipple arrangement. So you may make it so it is uh, physically impossible to plug in the wrong one just by uh, reversing the coupling in the nipple at the connection sites. Uh, also talked a lot about shipping and storage, its effects on design, uh, maybe the environment that they're shipped and stored in, and you know if the lines are pre-filled versus unfilled lines. Slide. And here's our call to action. Uh, so we do have our mailing list for advanced cooling solutions, also our cold plate work stream and our project wiki. Uh, you have two, one for advanced cooling solutions and one for ACS. I'd say uh, overall, just kind of to recap, uh, it was a very collaborative white paper. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth and exchange of information uh, and it went really well and allowed us to come up with some good groundwork for individuals or companies who need some guidance when it comes to manual couplings and hoses. Slide, that's the last slide right there. And thank you. All right, hey, thank you guys both so much. Um, do a quick check to see if there are any questions in the chat here. So I'm not seeing any questions just yet, which usually means that you've given too in-depth and too good of a presentation. Um, is there any, uh, Anything these folks should do if they're trying to get involved with what you're doing specifically? Hi, hi. this is Dureji. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Mike, uh, it's great uh, seeing you given this presentation and uh, I'm continued uh, to uh, enjoy working with you. Thank you. Yep, thank you uh, to you as well, Dr. Agonifer. Good to uh, hear you. I heard you earlier, so good to see yeah. you on here. Sure.